laugh. Uh, I used to read his stuff though in book in in book form, and he collected the best of them rather than than day by day, because I wasn't in New York. Uh, who else? Um, I mean, there are one or two critics in 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 Britain um, I've, I've I've admired very much. Um, Irving Wardle, who was the doyen of London critics of most of my time, there wrote for the Times and managed to do amazingly good overnight reviews. I thought, um, and uh, with, a, with a with a tremendous breadth and a rather a rather refreshing modesty. Uh, anyway, he he sort of set the standard for how the job was done in my time. I mean, I think there were certain things that some other of us maybe did better than he did, but overall he was terrific. Uh, those are the names that, that come to my mind immediately. Um, oh, I suppose one has to go back and say Shaw, for example, I mean, whose, whose stuff, if you read it, um, is, is brilliant. And of course, in most of the plays he'd written about have been forgotten. Otherwise, I, I might well go to people writing in other fields, like um, Pauline Kael's movie reviews in The New Yorker, Gary Giddens' jazz reviews in The Village Voice, uh, probably some other film critics as well. Anthony Lane now in The New Yorker. Uh, I don't have that many favorite American theater critics, I must say. I, I used to love Eric Bentley's stuff, again, which came out in book form, but during the two years he wrote, I think it was for the New Republic, yeah, it would have been for the New Republic, um, his stuff was really brilliant. I mean, people looked down on him as, or looked up to him as being an academic, but I think he's the best of the, the line of academic theater critics that is in America that has sort of steadily diminished. I mean, there have been more of them, but the quality has diminished. Uh, so those are the ones I'd go for. and. Uh, they're people who it's fun to read, yeah. but they, 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 they're not fun to read in a vacuum. If you read um, a Ken Tyne and Joke, for example, I mean, it's, it's always making a point. It's very rarely just decorative. It's because it's the best way he can find of saying something, which is something we should all aspire to, I think. So was there a part of the question I didn't answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I plead guilty as not knowing nearly enough about Canadian theatre before the first 60, the last 60 years, or probably during the last 60 years if it comes to that. But I don't know that that is going to affect me very much in the day-to-day -day way I go about my work. Uh, just to reiterate what Robert said, my two favorite theatre critics are his, Kenneth Tynan, Walter Kerr. Kenneth Tynan, if you can dig out in obscure bookstores, his earliest book, uh, He That Plays the King, and his other two collections, Curtains and Tynan, Right and Left, he was witty, he was informed, he was elegant, and he was passionate about the art. Walter Kerr has a whole bunch of collected books, uh, uh, How Not to Write a Play, uh, Tragedy and Comedy, 30 Plays Hath November, slews of them. You can probably find them in libraries and old bookstores. Uh, again, he was a kind of... Uh, an educated populist. You'd never know that he was a professor of theater at a university before he became a theater critic uh, because he seemed to write like a guy. He was the one who coined the famous Rave for Gypsy, best damn musical I've seen in years, which was the first time a piece of profanity occurred in a review and they quoted it everywhere back in 1959. It was amazing. But the man was a PhD and knew his way around, you know, he could argue brilliantly about the Commedia dell'arte and Greek tragedy, but he could write like a journalist guy on deadline which is what I admired about him. And he was very funny as well. Uh, the other thing, I think we're very lucky in the city to have four daily newspaper critics, uh, a major radio critic appearing all the time, weekly papers. Uh, the more criticism in the city, the better. I'll tell you the most horrible thing that ever happened to me is when I was running the Neptune Theater in Halifax, where there was one paper in the city. There's actually two papers, but it's the same paper, you know, morning and afternoon. And the young woman who was made the new theater critic came up to me and said, I'm so looking forward to be the theater critic. And I said, oh, that's great. She said, because I've never been to a play before. Okay, picture what that feels like when you're running the regional theater in the city, and that's the one voice in print about everything you do. So we should be really thankful, I think, in the city of Toronto that at least we've got as many of us who are here writing because it means the wealth can get spread around and one person cannot kill or make a show. We will, I've told him, <laughs> we will, I promise you, get to you. Okay. Um, I, I agree with my two colleagues here. Kenneth Tynan, he had his favorites. He had, you know, he really didn't like Vivian Lee, and you could sort of tell every time he sort of went after her. But he laid himself bare. You could tell what he liked, what he didn't like. Walter Kerr, brilliant, knowledgeable, thoughtful, um, informative. If he wrote a negative review, you could, you could see the disappointment. He sort of wrote with a tear in his eye. 
and when he loved something that was clear too and he could be devastating which he was occasionally I think in all the years I was writing reading him I read five devastating reviews and when you read it you sort of sit back the famous line if I just quote I will not say Portofino is the worst musical I've ever seen because I've only been seeing musicals since 1915 <laughs> <laughs> that's Walter Kerr there you go the lady at the yes go ahead So, so the uh, well. For, first, I will say that um, I didn't actually was not in support of being kind, and there's certainly a rolodex of Canadian filmmakers that know I'm not that kind. <laughs> um, I guess it was just a point of that is something that is brought up to critics a lot. Uh, I hear it every day from Canadian filmmakers about being nice, and I and I reply pretty much exactly like everyone up here was. Is, I, you know, I do my job, which is to review the movie. Now, the question um, coming, the, the question was, what was the question? <laughs> the question was, should they educate? Yeah, what is the, yeah, um, and we, we, did, we did touch on this, like the role of the critic in terms of uh, helping the audience or the reader uh, position them in a better place to see theater. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you're educating them. This is what the this is what was wrong with the play. This is what could could be improved in the play. This is why it didn't make sense. The same thing with a performance. You do the best you can to 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 introduce somebody to a wonderful, wonderful production. There, the monument got really good reviews. It's playing to nine people. Why is that? Because it didn't get good reviews. 
It did get it did get good reviews. I did read I read yours, but you, and you said.